The thalamus is the gateway to the brain. So the thalamus is the way station for all sensory input that comes from the environment, whether you hear it, whether you feel it, whether it's kinesthetic, whether it's tactile, whether it's visual, whether it's auditory. The exception is the olfactory sense. And one of the things the thalamus does is it, it you can see here <laughs> that it is a detour. It detours the stimulus so that if you have a very rapid stimulus coming in, like speech, for example, where there are changes occurring in time every 40 milliseconds or even less than that, then there's what's called a magnocellular pathway that detours the, the information for processing to the left hemisphere and processing phonologically. On the other hand, if what you're hearing right now, you're hearing two stimuli, you're hearing my voice and all the speech, but you're also hearing my intonational contour. Um, the melody, and you don't want that to go to the left hemisphere, you don't want that to go to our language system, um, you want that to go to the right hemisphere because it helps you to pay attention, it helps you to understand what's relevant, what's not relevant. Um, and all, did I make a statement? Did I have a question? Um, how emotionally involved am I in this content? And so that's, that's the parvocellular system. And we have a parvocellular and magnocellular system visually and auditorily. I'll explain that more in a minute. So that the thalamus then channels those, that, those stimuli so that what is happening is they're going to the right part of your brain so that you can process both kinds of information at the same time. And I'll explain it visually again now, and then we'll go into it auditorily. Now the basal ganglia are still part of this lower level system, this reptilian brain, and the basal ganglia, those of you who work with Parkinson's disease, if you've ever worked with Huntington's disease, if you work with patients who have swallowing disorders, if you work with patients who have dysarthria, many of you work with patients who have lesions or damage to the basal ganglia. The basal ganglia, it, you can see, kind of surrounds the thalamus, and it, it consists of the striatum, and I'll explain the striatum again in a minute. And then it also includes the globus pallidus. And these are just part of our extrapyramidal motor system for the most part. A lot of the striatum is regulating involuntary mo movement. And that's why if we have someone who has damage like, a, like a Huntington's chorea to the striatum or Parkinson's disease, you see, you see involuntary abnormal movements, tremors of different kinds. And tremors are, are a sign of, or any involuntary movements, chorea are big, huge movements. They're not tremors, but they're involuntary. And those are signs of, of basal ganglia involvement. Now, the frontal lobe of the human brain, we really are starting to understand much better. We just used to talk about the the prefrontal cortex, and we would talk about how important it was to executive functions. But now we really know because of a lot of the functional imaging, different parts of the frontal lobe and prefrontal cortex. We'll start with Broca's area, which is kind of halfway between the, the prefrontal cortex and the, and the motor cortex. And it's, it's divided into an opercular and triangular part. And so those are referred to the uh, the pars opercularis and the pars triangularis and those two make up they're part of the inferior frontal gyrus which is often going to be you're going to see it abbreviated as ifg but what you're going to see is those two combine together to be Broca's area operculum means lid so pars opercularis just means part the part of the frontal lobe that's the lid, and, and it's actually the lid over an internal area called the insula. Both of those are very important to motor speech. So we're going to talk more about the ventral and the dorsal stream in the brain, and a little bit later when we talk about language tracks, but it's important to know that the classical Broca's area, this par opercularis, and pars Triangu triangularis combined, area 44 and 45, are usually considered as classical Broca's area. They're considered together as classic Broca's area, um, and they're com key components of the ventral stream of language processing. 
as I said, operculum means lid. And so they, they're a lid over a, another cortex. So in the frontal lobe, we actually have two cortices. We have what we see on the outside, which is the operculum. And then underneath it, we have what's called the insula. And that just means island. And so it's just an island that's inside, if you will. And the insula has been found to be very important in praxis, especially speech praxis in the left hemisphere. So individuals who have motor speech disorders often have a, a disorders involvement of Broca's area and the insula, especially adults who have acquired motor speech disorders.